this culture wants to change your identity, wants to change your name, wants to change the way you think. Again, like I said, this was inspired by the Daniel Dilemma, and I encourage you to to, to check that book out, or maybe um, you like audio books, check out that audio book. The Daniel Dilemma comes um, around the life of a man named Daniel, who uh, was a Hebrew man, and when he was in exile, he uh, they, they him and a bunch of his friends, a bunch of you know Jews, lived in Babylon. They were indoctrinated into that culture. I mean, you know, everything, you know, they wore the clothes, they taught them how to speak the language, they ate the food. But not only those things, not only were those things happening, but they actually changed their names. And, um, you know, we know Daniel as his name, Daniel, but um, the, the, his name was also changed to uh, Belshazzar. I think I'm saying that right. I'll, uh, if I'm saying it wrong, please don't uh, don't kill me. I'm not looking at it at the moment. But, you know, um, we, the other three um, Hebrew boys that many of you, if you went to Sunday school, you heard about, um, we know them by their... We know them by their uh, Babylonian names, which is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They changed those names, and you know each of those names are were complete opposite to the name that they were given their their Jewish or their Hebrew name, which had a lot of things to do with God being the center or God is good, God is provided, and though all those names changed, and each of those names has something to do completely opposite of God, and um, one of the things that you got to recognize is that. Uh, culture will attempt to rename you or change your identity because you know for the in the scriptures if you look at names each of those names have a very important um, very significant meaning why they have that name it, it they might have been named that way because you know God provided in a certain way or they were a child that's like a miracle or there were all these really significant you know reasons for giving that child the name and all those things were changed this culture wants to change your identity wants to change your name, wants to change the way you think, you know, because a lot of your identity is based upon the things that you think about, the uh, the thoughts that occur inside of your mind. And you, you know this, like if you think about something long enough, you begin living that way. And so if you think about yourself differently, if you think about yourself in a different identity, through a different uh, frame of mind, through a different context, you'll begin to live in that way. And a, lot of, a lot of times that's good. You know, it's good to think of yourself differently. You know, it's good to change your thinking about yourself. A lot of you have been told that you'll never amount to nothing, or you're just like this person, or every time you do this, people don't like you, and on and on and on and on. You need to change the way you think about yourself. You have to change your identity, that I am a child of God, that I am loved by the King, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Because if you start to think like that, It'll change the way that you live. You'll start to live with a lot more purpose, with a lot more joy, a lot more peace. Uh, it, it's it's good at times to change your identity and change your name. But you know what was happening in that culture is they wanted to change their name to take everything away from God. And and, and a lot of you know what I'm talking about. You know, the, the, depending on the school that you go to, it's 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 uh, really easy to want to change who you are and conform or want to look like or behave like the other kids or um, depending on, you know, where you work, you know, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. I'll tell you this story. Um, when, you know, when I first came to the Lord, I was, you know, I was around uh, 17 years old, graduated from high school, um, got a job um, at in the hospital. And I'll tell you what, man, I, I was on fire for the Lord. Um, I eventually became on a, came on a path to ministry, and and um, this is my life now. You know, I got to give my life to Jesus, and now I'm serving Him with my life. It's it's awesome. But you know, uh, while I was in the midst of my transformation, man, I had a whole lot of issues that I had to work out. And one of the things that I had to work out is I was a different person in every different scenario I find myself in at church. I was just. A, a regular guy trying to go after the Lord, trying to figure things out, you know, trying to have a reduced pattern of sin, trying to cuss a little bit less, you know, trying to uh, get my life straightened out. You know, when I went to work, I'll be honest with you, being in that hospital and being around all, all those different people, you know, I used to kind of wild out a little bit. I would say 
the dumbest things or I would behave a way that I would never behave that way in front of, you know, my Christian friends. And, you know, I, I got into that culture and it was easy to just uh, to throw away some of my standards so that I could be liked, so that I can be accepted, so that I uh, seemed like I was like cool or down or a good hang. And, you know, I found myself jeopardizing a lot of my standards so that I could attain a certain level, you know, of, of social acceptance. And it is so easy to do that. It's so easy to do that. It, it's so not uncommon for that to be the life that you experience. You know, you, you know people like this. You know, we, we have a word for that. We call them two-faced. You know, they're, they're one way in one scenario and they're another way in a different scenario. And I'll tell you what, no one gets anywhere like that because eventually that stuff catches up with you and you got to reconcile. And, and if that's what you're walking through right now, I encourage you, listen, it's not worth it. Trying to be somebody that you're not to win over some acceptance that you don't even need, it's not worth it. Because here's the reality, and I, I'm glad I got a hold of this early enough, is all of those people that I wanted to impress so bad, you don't want to know how many of them are in my life? Zero. Zero. Not a single one are in my life right now. And for some reason, it was so important to me. It's just not worth it for you. And so I would encourage you just to know that like that compartmentalization of your life, it, it's, it's hard to maintain. It's hard to keep up.